Hey there, I'm Josh, and today I'm going to be just joshing around, building some bookshelves. This video is the third in a series of projects that I'm working on in an effort to upgrade my kids' rooms. They went in kind of an order of necessity. I started with the beds, and then I moved on to a chest of drawers for my boys' room, and now I'm making some bookshelves for both of their rooms, though I'm only going to show the ones that I'm making for my daughter's room. The dimensions for this particular set of bookshelves is right here. They're 6 foot high, 4 foot wide, and 10 inches deep. I've got a lot of work to do, so let's get to it. For the construction of these shelves, I'm mainly using two basic materials, 3 quarter inch red oak plywood and solid oak boards. While this project actually includes me building several sets of shelves, I only filmed the construction of one set. I began by breaking down the sheets of plywood into their correct, respective dimensions. This involved first ripping them down on the table saw, as you've already seen, and then cutting some of the pieces to length using the compound miter saw. And I say only some of the pieces, because since I don't have a dedicated miter saw station, it's hard for me to effectively set up stop blocks to make repeated cuts when I want to have multiple pieces the same length. So for those, I switch back to the table saw using the crosscut sled, which, as you can see, I set up a little stop block on the side of the fence back there. This allows me to quickly and easily cut down all eight of the floating shelves to the exact same length. After those were all cut, I set up the dado stack in the table saw and began to cut all of my dado slots in the sides of the boards. The two outer sideboards will have a slot near the bottom and near the middle, while the middle vertical support board will have slots cut into either side of it near the middle. And finally, the fixed bottom shelf will have a slot cut into the top face of it. I'll show you how they all fit together here in a moment. Once all the plywood pieces were taken care of, it was time to start on the solid oak boards. I began with these by first running them through the planer to get them down to the correct thickness and also to make them nice and smooth. Once the boards were all planed down, I took them to the table saw and began to cut them into strips. These strips are being cut to an inch and a half wide and they'll be used as the face frame for the shelves. Next I cut them down to length and was sure to leave them just a bit long. This was to ensure that I had nice tight joints between the pieces so I could trim them as necessary. Once those pieces were cut, it was time to start the assembly. For these shelves, just like the past couple projects I've done, I'm using glue and brad nails to assemble them. First, I applied some glue to the lower dado slot, then I clamped the bottom shelf into place and drove in some brad nails. I then repeated the same process again to secure the other side. With the two sides secure, I attached the middle support piece into the slot on the top face of the fixed bottom shelf. Then I slipped both of the fixed middle shelves into place and began to secure them as well. For these, I just drove brad nails in through the outer sides, and then I clamped them into place and left them overnight to dry. Next, I got started on drilling all the holes for the shelf pegs. I put down a strip of masking tape and then used my homemade shelf peg jig to drill a series of holes wherever I wanted them, this case being a dozen holes near the edge of each cavity. As you can see, I just drilled a couple holes and then used a quarter twenty bolt to secure the jig into place while I drilled the rest of them, and the tape helped to combat any excessive chip out from the drill bit. Once the first series of holes was done, I just repeated that same process like 9,000 more times until all of them were done. Next, I nailed in some support strips that will help to attach the top. Then it was time for my favorite part of every project, sanding. And although I have to admit that I don't hate it as much as I once did, it still really sucks to have to sand everything this much. But it's a necessary part of the process. Once that was done, I began to attach all the strips for the face frame. I'm doing this by once again using the combination of glue and brad nails. I was sure to make sure... Great job talking, Josh. I was certain to ensure it, that the outer edge of every trim strip was flush with the plywood. 
before attaching it into place, that is. I first attach both of the vertical side strips, and then attach the cross pieces into place. And last, I popped in the middle vertical piece as well. I trimmed everything as necessary as I went, just to make sure it all had a nice tight fit. I used a tiny bit of wood filler to fill in all the nail holes. I let it all dry and then even though I didn't film it, I sanded all the spots flush. Next, I got out the router and put an 8th inch roundover on all the face frame trim strips. Even though this part wasn't completely necessary, it was a nice way to soften all the edges and give it a more finished appearance. After that, I began applying all the iron-on edge banding to the fixed middle shelves. I've used this stuff before, and I really appreciate how easy it is to apply. You just set your iron to the cotton setting, and then use it to push the strip onto the edge of the plywood. You then cut it down to size, and then trim away all the excess, using a utility knife, or they actually make a special tool to do this. I've actually found that it works better if you don't trim all the excess away so it's completely flush with the sides of the plywood. If you leave a little bit extra, and then use an orbital sander on the edges, it blends it seamlessly between the edge banding and the plywood, meaning that you really can't even tell that it's there. It just looks like a solid board. Once the two fixed middle shelves were done, I moved on and repeated the same process on all the floating shelves. This particular set that I'm doing will have 8 floating shelves along with all the fixed shelves, or 12 shelves altogether. Now I could have done them all fixed, but I wanted to have the versatility to move the shelves around as needed, hence the pegs. After those were all done, I set them aside and started on the topper. This piece will mainly consist of plywood, with solid oak strips added to the edges. I cut the strips down and then added some glue. I carefully clamped everything so it was a nice tight fit and then I drove in some brad nails to secure it. I repeated the same thing on the other end, and then before attaching the front piece, I held it up into place so I could get a correct measurement and cut it down to size. I trimmed it down, and then I attached it the same way that I did the other pieces. Overall, this is a pretty effective way to make the top board look like a solid piece, but it's not exactly the most elegant solution to it. By securing the strips with brad nails, you're left with nail holes, and even though you can apply some wood filler to mostly hide those, they're still somewhat noticeable, which is kind of annoying. Regardless, this is the way that I chose to do it for this particular project, though I may look into alternative methods for future projects. Once the wood filler was all dry, I gave the whole piece a good sanding. I focused specifically where all the edges meet up, just to ensure a nice seamless transition. Once that was done, I got the router back out and put a 3 8 roundover on the front and the two side edges. I didn't record it, but I lightly hand sanded everything before installing the top piece. To install it, I got it all lined up correctly and then clamped it into place. I then pre-drilled the holes and drove in some screws through those support strips into the top. I used two screws per strip for a total of four across the front and four across the back. With that all done, it was time to move toward finishing everything. As always, I first started by wiping everything down with tack cloth to get rid of all the dust, and then I applied this pre-stained conditioner. I started with the floating shelves, and then moved on to the main body of the bookshelves. I flooded the surface of everything, then waited 15 minutes for it to dry, before wiping away all of the excess and moving on to staining. This particular set of shelves that I'm doing is going into my daughter's room, so it has to match her existing furniture. So I'm staining it using golden oak stain. Just like with the conditioner, I started first with the floating shelves before moving on to the main body of the bookshelves. Aside from seeing the wood kind of come to life using the various finishes that I use, I would have to guess that this has to be the most boring part of the video. I mean, it's definitely the most boring part of editing, I'll tell you that. I mean, it's just mainly repeated footage of me wiping various liquids onto wood, which kind of gets monotonous. Hmm, for the part where you see me adding the polyurethane to the furniture, let's see if we can add some pizzazz. Okay, never mind. On second thought, let's skip the pizzazz. To apply the polyurethane, I once again use my normal method. 
The first coat is a 1 to 1 mixture of poly and mineral spirits. The second coat is a 3 to 1 mixture. And then the final coat is just full strength polyurethane. And I once again allowed ample dry time between coats. Then I sanded it lightly with some super fine steel wool and wiped away all the dust using some tack cloth before moving on to the next coat. And once that was done, so were the shelves. You know, upon editing, it just now occurred to me that I didn't show anything of how I made the backer piece. That's a big whoops. FYI, it's just a piece of quarter inch sanded plywood that I stained the same color. Regardless, overall, these shelves came together quite well. They offer some really strong, solid support. Which is good, because my daughter has a couple hundred books that she's going to be loading this thing up with. With how sturdy and solid this set of bookshelves is, I have no doubt that it will serve her well, even through her college years. And I do love how they look. With every new piece of furniture that I'm making, I'm gaining more and more of an appreciation for just the simple beauty of natural wood. Even though I've been primarily focused on making things out of oak, the different variations and species of wood is something I'd really like to explore in future projects. But for now, both this set of shelves and the one I made for my boys' room matches their existing furniture quite well. You know, working on this series of projects was pretty enlightening. I learned quite a bit. And I really like how everything has come together in a nice uniform way, especially with this set of bookshelves. I'm very happy with how they turned out, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful in some way. If you're new here, be sure to check out some of my other stuff that's going to pop up here in a moment. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.